on top of everything that I possibly can for you. And some of it's really interesting if you want to hear about the science. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so things stay the same. With that in mind, uh, the Wednesday Advent services are continuing as we continue with our theme, Silent Night. It'll be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock will be our service done by 7.30. 30 minutes or less. You know what? Ten times your money back. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Um, but a devotional style is what we're doing. And also... Christmas Eve, I got to get all the times right in my head, is at 7 o'clock here, and Christmas Day is at 9.30 with Communion Christmas Day. So you're welcome to join us for all those opportunities, in person certainly, but online as well. The other announcement, Susie. So you wear it when you're not talking, but when you are talking, you don't wear it? It's hard for people to understand me. That's been true for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you're my straight man today, so <laughs> I can't argue with that. So, red ones if you have them. so big red's full of it is what you want. Ah. But we will fill it because everybody likes a big red bag. Uh -huh. Everybody. And then these will be given to the gospel mission because they need some gloves and hats for the people in Nebraska and Iowa area. And tell them. Well, I just needed to make sure you heard the big red. Yeah, hard. Thank you, Ada. She made our big red bag for us. That's the first part of what's been going on with the mission board. The second part is the silent auction. And there will be papers by the beautiful items today. And things like baskets, that's heavy. And and other handmade things or lots of handmade things. Do you know what people were doing during COVID? You'll come look, it's beautiful. And we'll have, how we're doing it is there will be a sign up sheet and then you get a number. And then you can go put your number on all the items and or some of the items. And then on December 20th, we will Tally it all up and tell you what you won. At what time? Says. At what time? Before noon. noon so is when we'll the noon <coughs> at 12 o'clock on the 20th is the cutoff. Yes, that's when we'll tally it all up. We thought about extending it, but we wanted noon on the 20th because some people are buying these things for Christmas presents. So... And Pastor, which one do you want as a Christmas present? <laughs> the big red bag? I, was, I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. And so please help yourselves look at everything and encourage your friends to come and check it all out. We will not be having a meal on the 20th, which I started that rumor, but we decided to change that because of all the sickness going around, but we are still doing the silent auction, and please, you can still bring things if you have things for it, still bring them at any time, we'll just add them in, and thank you very much. What's it going toward? Thank you very much, Pastor. Yeah, you're hung up on the big red stuff. <laughs> um, I just want to know the important part. And it's going toward all of our mission trips that will happen at some point, our mission trips. Poland and the 
mission, whatever mission that the mission board is supporting, we are trying to raise money for those. This is for the Polish mission trip. It's possible that it'll happen this summer. It's possible that it will happen this summer. I agree with that. <laughs> so, please support and thank you for all the people that have already made stuff and brought stuff. Thank you very much. Have a merry advent. Is that a thing? Put your mask on. All right. Any other announcements? Yes. I just want to encourage everybody to sign up for the sign up sheet for the stone removal. It's a good exercise for the therapy. There's no age, there's no age limit. So we have quite a few signed up. We're still looking for the month of March. April is kind of slow, but we have a guy that's going to do it the whole month of April. So the month of the spring, we're going to have to boot through the stone. We had a lot of wet, heavy snow last this last April, so. What we're doing is removing the sidewalk. The parking lot is hired done, and uh, we've had some little problems here that I spoke last Wednesday or Sunday. So this will be the last time I'll ask. So hopefully we can fill the day. We need about three people, two weeks, for a given month, and we'll rotate. The more we get, the less there is. It takes about 45 minutes to move the snow from the corner of the edge building all the way around to the east door to the Thank you, Dar. Anybody else? Order of service is printed for you in the worship bulletin.
Christ and join together in worship and praise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May be seated for the Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? 
All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength. <clears throat> o Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up, fear not, says to the city of, of Judah. Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, and this will serve the basis for our meditation together this morning. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. Having heard God's word, we now joyfully join in together, making bold confession of our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by 
from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for him. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours. From our almighty God, our all-loving God, our heavenly Father, his one and only Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May God grant us his Holy Spirit to give us that faith and keep that faith within us now and until life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The words of our text are, as I stated earlier, from 2 Peter chapter 3, as was read for you earlier, but I want to read some of the verses for you again, because I find them very interesting, uh, starting with verse 11. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? And then verse 14. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And that is our text. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, I want you to go back in time with me. The place is Italy. And there's a lot of bombs that are going off in the air and on the land. And there were two young, at least we'll say middle-aged men, 
that had a trek and a distance in mind. They were going to make it about three kilometers. That's for our European friends that may be following online. For you, that's about a mile and a half. As they were going and they were weaving around all the obstacles and barriers that were there, and there were huge bombs that were coming, and somehow knowing that these men were there, going off right next to them, things were destroyed all around them as they weaved through trying to miss the barrage of artillery that was being fired, directed at them, trying to be able to get them. But our two heroes, meandering through the streets that are clearly war-torn, as they're going from building to building, hiding behind obstacles, as they could hear the whistling of the next barrage coming through and landing next to them or just in front of them or a little bit behind them. But our heroes were not hit. They made it that three kilometers as they weaved through the streets of Naples, Italy to be able to long last make that concert. That's right. I was on my way to a concert. It's New Year's Eve. And everything I described to you is 100% true. Because for some reason, in Naples, Italy, there's a tradition that on New Year's Eve, there's an out with the old and in with the new. There were furniture that was being heaved off the balconies and landing on the streets next to us. Obstacles for us to weave around. And the Napoleons... Napoleons, whatever you want to call those people from Naples, think it's hilarious that when you're drinking, to be able to throw these big, huge fireworks right at those idiots that are out there walking the streets to make a concert that we heard was going to be broadcast worldwide, if not at least throughout the continent of Europe. I found out that that custom of out with the old and throwing up beds and, and couches and refrigerators and all this other stuff from their balconies, that for the next week, the city of Naples goes around and cleans all this up. It really was scary. You need to know that because it was so scary, I didn't care how much money I paid it was difficult to find a taxi, but I found one after the concert and made it back to my hotel room where I joined Susie in our room, and we looked out the window. And if you were to ask her her description of these events as you could hear the whistling of these bombs that were coming to the streets and the fireworks that just decorated the sky nonstop, for hours upon hours, a 360 degree view, she would tell you it was beautiful. And I have to admit, from the comfort of the hotel room, on the floor, we were up, I don't know, the 15th floor, something like that, it was beautiful. There was not a fear around me by that point. And I've got to tell you, if you were to talk to both of us in this description, you would find that there in that hotel room in Naples, Italy, I was more at peace than she was. There's something about the fear of having to experience trouble and turmoil, and there's that anxiety that gets built up that when you finally survive it, when you finally make it through, there is that ah, peace. You didn't know this, but there's going to be a test. Each candle of our Advent wreath has a name. 
Now, there's a name of the candle and there's the theme for the week. Last week, who remembers the name of the candle? There you go, the prophet's candle. Very good, it's the prophet's candle. And the word is hope. You see, the message of the prophets gave hope to the people who were in torment. Because, you see, they were being captured. They were being killed because they were Jewish people. And because Assyria and Babylon were taking them over. And so the message of the prophets, the one that gave them hope of the promise of a Messiah, got transferred to us as well. This week, it's the Bethlehem candle. And it's got that name because of the key word, peace. Now, we kind of have this, but I... If, you were, if I were to tell you to do an art project, which I just never like telling people to do, but if you were to draw for me the city of Bethlehem, and if you were a good artist, you probably would duplicate some visual that you've seen, you know, with the buildings that probably set in that style and at that time period. You might even have some lights from candles, I'm going to assume, that are shining there. And it would be nighttime, and you might even have a star over top of that city. It'd be beautiful, isn't it? To be able to step back and look at it, it's beautiful. And yet, what we have sung about, oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by, and yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Ah, so beautiful. But in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So each went to his own town to register. And so Joseph went with his betrothed wife, Mary. And there was no room for them because they were filled up and it was busy. And I don't know about your experiences, but if you're ever on a journey and you're driving through from the distance at night, the lights are beautiful. But if you get into that city and there's a convention going on, you cannot find a place to stay. And if you go talk from personal experience to a hotel manager when they have no vacancies whatsoever, and they will curtly tell you, and there isn't room in one single hotel in this entire city. There's no beauty or peace there. There's anxiety. That's what's built up. It's all based on your view and your perspective. And really, that's the point of the words of our text from 2 Peter where we've got the view of being immersed in a battle scene. It's talking about end times still. It's still carrying on. We're remembering that he came once and he's going to come again. Did you hear the words that I read? After all these things will be dissolved. The heavens will be set on fire and dissolved. The heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. Isn't that beautiful? There's no peace there at all. Or is there? Because you see, the words of John the Baptist that say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, either sounds very anxious when you hear it, because you see, there is no repentance. I've been going about my own sinful way. I've been minding my own business. God hasn't said or done anything up to this point. Why would I think he would do anything now? 
there are worse sinners out there than me. And when we listen to the world and my sinful flesh and Satan, who is the heart of all of this bad thing, anxiety gets built up. When we don't focus on the words of John the Baptist and hear them as joyful words for us, that I can have forgiveness of all of my sins by simply repenting. I repent of all my sins and God has mercy upon me and he takes them all upon himself. He takes it away from me, but he puts it upon himself. For that's what he came for. That's what he was born for. The words of Peter remind us the foundation. Don't think of your anticipation and your waiting as God's not here or that he's not answering or that he's slow for a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day but he's being patient he's being patient with me having had mercy on me if I look back in my life in my journey, I am dodging one sin after another. And there are so many times that I get caught up into it where I get hit with the bomb of sin that comes at me. I get worried and I get fearful. I get anxious because there's sin all around me. If I turn on the quote-unquote news, I get more scared. But if we hear the words of John, we hear the words of Peter in our text, and if we come from the outside looking in, my view is when you're in the middle of it, you're caught in and anxiety is caught up. But when we are embraced in the arms of that babe of Bethlehem who holds us so dear, you can't help but go, aww. I mean, come on, if you, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are, if you are in the presence of an infant, and I don't care what's going on in the world today, and that infant grabs hold of your finger and smiles, they got you, right? They got you. And there is peace. That little town of Bethlehem the Bethlehem candle gives us peace because that's where our Savior is born. And all the fear, all the worry, all the doubt, all the tumult, all the anxiousness, we could substitute these words with modern words. The election didn't go the way it was supposed to go. Evil has won. There is sickness, and everybody's going to get sick and die. Evil has won. Or we step back, and we take a look at a world that our Savior loves so much, that God became flesh and dwelt among us. He's the protector and the barrier. We get to look at the beauty of that babe born in Bethlehem who came and took my sins, my worries, my fears, my anxiety upon himself. And all of a sudden, we see the beauty. The beauty of forgiveness. We get the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding that it keeps our hearts and our minds and our lives in him for right now and all the way to life everlasting peace I leave with you my peace I give to you. Amen. And now, 
made that amazing piece of God, which does indeed surpass all human understanding. Let it keep your hearts and your minds and lives in him now and on all the way to life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your people through the word and holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of these United States, the governor and legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity especially Shelley Tuttle, Sharon Hartnett, Lyle Todd, Kim Dahm, Kim Fales, Joanne Walsh, Justin Miller, Phyllis Todd, Susan Utech, Sarah Hansen, Beth, Ken Todd, Bob Dormeyer, Kimberly Christensen, Don Millette, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Howie Holenreed, Pat Mary Bowes, Joan Brun, Clarine Leffler, Diane Barge, Roxanne Dalm, Karen Neeson, Doug Millette, Pastor Henry Witte, Diane Nelson, Matt Legrand, Josh Legrand, Bonnie Schneider, Katrina Peabody, Pastor Jerry Brun, Steve Dolezal, Deanna Dolezal, Gary Bach, Sandy Millette, Ann Peterson, Lori Langdenberg, Bob Gruber, Will Wittenborg, Carmen Ortega, Steve Peterson, Randy Barnes, Corby Barnes, Butch Putzier, Joel Brandon, Norman Legrand, John Murray, Troy Crouch, Titus Dedeker, Herb Bathke, Doc Billier, Shirley Billier, Bob Walsh, Jennifer Veen. Be with our shut-ins, especially Shirley Patrick, James and Teresa Santee, Bob Jager, Jane Winter, Lois Went, Florence Knoop, Doris Beckman, David Hoff, Don Larson, Glenda Beck, Shirley Book, Rose Johnson, and Lois Lacor. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, defend your church here on earth, especially the pastors and people who gather together at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Carroll, Nebraska, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Minden, Nebraska, Trinity Lutheran Church in Morrill, Nebraska, Trinity Lutheran Church in Murdoch, Nebraska, the entire SELC district of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, the faculty, the staff, and the students at Concordia University in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 
our brothers and sisters who gather together at the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Sioux City, Iowa, and those at Eastside Baptist Church here in South Sioux City, Nebraska. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord of word and sacrament, we thank and praise you for the gift of your son, that through this amazing gift of Jesus' very body and blood, connected with simple bread and wine, we may be in communion with you as well as with one another, being fed and nourished, rejoicing in the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation you promise for those who receive it in faith. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. night that he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks gave it to his disciples saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Take and drink. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. <laughs> Take and 
drink the blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in that true faith until life everlasting. Go in his peace and his joy because your sins are forgiven. We, we pray. And sing his praise. Tell everyone he is. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. <laughs>